Welcome to Astro Academy Principia. Featuring astronaut Tim Peake on board the International Space Station, Sophie Allen on the ground in the experiment room, and myself, Anu Ojar, at the National Space Academy. Here in the UK, our national space sector has been an amazing success story, employing over 30,000 people, contributing more than £11 billion per year to the UK economy and growing at an incredible rate. Historically, the UK's world-class space expertise has included three main categories. Firstly, astronomy the use of telescopes both on and off Earth, including the Hubble, Herschel and Planck space missions. Now, the data from these has transformed our understanding of not only the origins, but also the future of the universe. Secondly, robotic exploration of the solar system. And this has included the Rosetta mission, a rendezvous with and landing on the nucleus of comet churyumov gerasimenko after a 10-year voyage through space. And finally, space applications. And this means the use of data and services from space, such as telecommunication satellites, global positioning satellite systems, and Earth observation missions. These systems are continuing to provide those services which have a critical role in maintaining our 21st century way of life. So what's changed with Britain's involvement with human spaceflight? And what new opportunities now exist for UK scientists and engineers? Tim isn't the first Briton to have gone into space, but he's the first astronaut flying for the European Space Agency. And for the first time, the UK is now involved in ELLIPS, the European programme for life and physical sciences. And this means that we now have opportunities for UK researchers to use, for the first time, Earth-based platforms for what we call analogue studies. These are programmes and facilities which can recreate, for short periods of time, weightless or microgravity environments. Programmes such as ESA's Parabolic Flight Campaign. And facilities like the 146 metre tall Bremen Drop Tower. Bedrest studies involve volunteers lying horizontally for weeks or even months at a time as an analogue for weightlessness. And since the muscles and bones of the volunteers are loaded far less than usual, and through being monitored for biological and physical changes, new insights have been gained into the effect of long-duration spaceflight on the human body. The use of centrifuges for higher-than-normal or hypergravity environments means that experiments can be conducted to investigate how and why biological and physical systems may exhibit very different behaviour in different gravity fields. And the data from all of these analogue platforms are already leading to new advances in biology, physiology, material science, engineering and chemistry. But perhaps most significantly, UK researchers now have the opportunity to exploit the science laboratories on board the ISS itself. The station's space environment, with its challenges of extremely low effective gravity, enhanced radiation and isolation, mean that researchers are able to glean new insights into the behaviour of biological and physical systems in a way that's impossible to fully replicate here on Earth. So with the UK's involvement in ELLIPSE, a whole new range of space and Earth-related science discipline have opened up for UK researchers to explore. And we now need the next generation of young people to become part of this amazing success story, to grow it to its full potential, to provide critical injections of creativity and enthusiasm to exploit these new opportunities, 
and to write the next chapter in the ongoing story of the UK space sector. But a final question that's often asked is, why do we explore? Why human spaceflight? It's been more than four decades since humans last set foot on an alien world, the moon. And in that intervening time, we changed our focus from the human exploration of space to instead building our experience of the human exploitation of the space environment in low Earth orbit. We concentrated on spending longer and longer periods of time in space and cooperated in international projects that would have been deemed impossible only a few years ago. And what we learnt through those extended human operations in space on the ISS, with the mission times of many months instead of days, and facing the challenges of sustaining human survival in the very harshest of environments, we're now ready for the next phase in human space exploration. New international spacecraft are now being built which rely on life support systems and new technologies which were pioneered through testing on board the ISS. So the coming years will see humanity once again venturing beyond low Earth orbit, returning to the Moon once more, exploring near-Earth asteroids, and even, perhaps, embarking on a human voyage to the planet Mars. So perhaps the ultimate legacy of the UK's human spaceflight programme will be its contribution to the extending of humanity's frontiers. From having a permanent human outpost in Earth orbit, to the establishment of future colonies on other worlds. In the words of the father of Russian rocketry, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the Earth is the cradle of humanity, but we cannot live in a cradle forever.